Hello everyone, this is Kyle with the code narrative video for my 316 final project on metadynamic algorithms. And in this video I'm going to be showing you what's under the hood of that algorithm and what kind of implementation goes on to yield free energy surfaces like this one that you see here. Now I don't know about you, but my favorite way to eat an elephant is to eat it one bite at a time. And what I mean by that is I like taking a larger problem and breaking that down into smaller subproblems. And each of those subproblems might have its own nested subproblems. And I like writing a function that solves each of these small problems individually. So the first problem I identified is defining some kind of system. My metadynamic algorithm works with any system as long as it has a Hamiltonian formatted correctly but I had to choose something uh, just for the sake of demonstration and I chose some kind of arbitrary polymer system whose collective variables, those collective variables being the variables that we use to express energy in the system, uh, the two collective variables are polymer curling the x direction which I call theta and a polymer curling in the, the y direction which I call phi. So you imagine this polymer has like two degrees of freedom in the way that it can curl and I made a potential function for each one of these. And these are semi-periodic, so if you imagine the polymer wrapping around on itself might relieve some energy in some configurations due to van der Waals attractions or something like that. Um, so that's what it looks like for um, energy as a function of theta, which is that x direction curl. And then phi is something similar. Again, it is also a semi-periodic function. But now instead, I added um, an additional uh, term or should I say factor that depends on theta which is the curl in the x direction and I did this just to make pretty much the final energy surface we get a little bit more interesting because if the two uh, potentials for theta and phi are completely independent you just get a bunch of saddle points which is not necessarily the most interesting thing to look at and then f finally for the last step of defining my system I write a Hamiltonian which is the sum of the potential contributions from each of the collective variables theta and phi and I rewrite these theta and phi as x and y uh, just to make the Hamiltonian agnostic of whatever system I define so then you could theoretically swap this Hamiltonian out with another Hamiltonian and then run the same exact metadynamic algorithm and get a cool result out of that as well and next we move into the implementation of the actual algorithm and I want to call your memory back to the analogy that I made in the last video where you imagine that we have an ant on some surface uh, we don't know what the surface looks like we're completely in the dark but the ant can walk around randomly and deposit parcels of sand as it goes and then after a certain amount of time those sand parcels will basically trace out the surface that we were looking at because this is really the thinking that's critical to understanding uh, how this whole algorithm works and that's the thought process I use behind implementing it. So the, the very first function I made was just uh, called get random CV configuration which basically it gives you a random like polymer configuration and all of that does is given the specification for the domain bounds so minimum and maximum on X and Y which are again our two CVs it'll just give you a random X and Y coordinate and that's just for starting the random walk so nothing too exciting there the the real juicy stuff starts happening when we get to next random walk step which takes the previous X and Y position you were at as well as a domain specification and a configurable step size and it chooses from that point it chooses a random angle and then makes a step of magnitude step size away from that to give you a new x and y coordinate or in the case that it happens to step outside of the bounds it kind of restarts the random walk and just chooses a new random point within the domain and it returns that as an x y coordinate in 2d notice that i actually don't say anything about energy yet at this step because that comes actually in this next function and this is where we get the 3d uh, landscape out of it. Now having two continue, um, two CVs, so that's an X and a Y, you could solve for an energy from those X and Y from the Hamiltonian to get a Z coordinate which will be your energy and that's how you get a 3D surface and that is what happens in solve next step. So This is kind of like a wrapper function of sorts for a next random walk step. So this will call that function to get an X and a Y then it solves the energy at the next step but not so fast because it's actually not that simple um, what happens if the ant is in a low elevation configuration of, of the, the, um, the system? So it's in kind of like a valley, and it wants to go to a higher energy or a higher elevation part. It's not as simple as just walking there, because the whole way the metadynamic algorithm works is that it's going to have to fill up this mold or this landscape with sand as the ant walks around. 
and this is where that filling up with sand kind of happens. So this might be the hardest function to wrap your head around. It might take a few minutes. Um, but essentially what this is doing is that when it has that next x and y it wants to visit, it compares the energy level of its current position to that next position. And if it happens that that next energy is higher, basically it needs to solve for all of the intermediate positions um, from where it is now to there by stacking up sand to kind of build up elevation and then it can visit that next point. And um, in, in the case that the, the next elevation is the same or lower, then it's just as simple as, as going there. But the, the stacking up sand part is actually really important to the whole notion of filling up this mold of sand. Uh, and that's how you really you can get all of those contours of the metadynamic uh, of the surface via a metadynamic algorithm. So that's what solve next step is. Basically, in short, it, it uses that next location to solve for energy and then any of the intermediate energies it might need to solve for in order to get there to account for that elevation change. And then coming up next, I have what I call the meat and potatoes of my metadynamic algorithm, which is called Explore Surface Metadynamic. And uh, this takes in things like your Hamiltonian, the domain specification, the random walk step size, and the total number of steps you want to make. And this basically facilitates the random walk by first choosing some kind of random starting point, which is a random configuration of CVs, uh, solving for energy at that location. And then uh, what it does is it repeatedly calls solve next step to solve for the energy at the next step and then any intermediate energies it might need to solve for. And what this returns is a long list of x, y, and z coordinates that represent the energy solved at those CVs. And notice that I haven't said anything about visualization yet. That's actually coming up next. And one other thing I want to note is that the number of coordinates in that list it returns might actually be larger than number of steps. Uh, and that's because Occasionally, if you in solve next step, it'll give you uh, all of the energies that are solved and intermediate energies when it climbed when the ant climbed out of that well. I next have a very simple function called flip energy surface. Now, recall from my ant analogy that as your ant's walking around the surface or this mold and it deposits sand, the sand formation it gives you is actually a negative or an inverse of what you actually care about looking at, and you have to flip that upside down. Like imagine if you're injection molding plastic into a mold, you would then need to uh, flip the mold over and then pull the mold off and then that gives you the form you're interested in. So I, f I really make that happen with this function which takes any x, y, z coordinate and then returns x, y, and negative z. So it's just negating the energy value to flip that formation upside down. And this works for one point, but when we go to visualize surface metadynamic, which is the last function in this uh, this kind of chain of functions for metadynamic algorithm implementation, uh, we see that this flip energy surface is threaded across the entire output of Explore Surface Metadynamic. So in the big picture scheme, this visualize function is like a wrapper that uh, a wrapper function that takes the output of Explore Surface, negates all of the energy values, and then displays them graphically using Mathematica spheres. And the reason why I chose Mathematica Spheres instead of the more traditional Gaussian is because Mathematica actually makes it super convenient to visualize a whole bunch of spheres by just passing a list of x, y, z locations into the argument of sphere. So that's why I chose to do that because it's just very convenient. And now we can actually see what this all looks like yet again. So I specified some kind of domain from 0 to 4 pi for each of the CVs. So that's analogous of uh, permitting the polymer to twist between zero to uh, a full two rotations in either direction. I ran my metadynamic algorithm twice with both of the parameter sets. So I ran it twice with a low resolution but fast set of parameters. That means a large random walk step size and using larger sand parcels. And then I also ran it twice using a smaller random walk step size and smaller sand parcels, which gives you a higher resolution uh, plot and using more random walk steps, but takes significantly longer. And you can see that comparing the two, even though these are generated using the same parameters, you're going to see a little bit of variability. And that's just because it is a random walk and it's different every time you do it. But overall, the general landscape or the general topography of this free energy surface is still visible in either one. 
and comparing these two, these actually look remarkably similar, but you can still note some differences in between the two. And they both give you a pretty clear picture of what that free energy landscape looks like. This video was created as part of MIT 3016, also known as Mathematics and Computation for Material Science and Engineering, under the supervision of Professor Craig Carter and teaching assistants Pooja Reddy and Lauren Cooper. Thank you for watching.